we're in the midst of the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, so the first industrial revolution uh, was led by coal. Uh, the second one uh, uh, by oil. Uh, the third one uh, by natural gas. And this one is being led by net zero. Hello and welcome to The Switch. I'm Elena Casas, and today we're focusing on the most common chemical element in the universe, hydrogen. Decades before electric cars, hydrogen was touted as the fuel of the future, but it never quite got out of the starting blocks. Hydrogen is not zero carbon unless the electricity used to make it is renewable. Much of it is now produced from natural gas. Green hydrogen has long been held back by high costs, but the recent price spike in gas has changed the equation. In Sheffield, in the north of England, ITM Power is one of Europe's leading manufacturers of electrolyzer fuel cells that turn hydrogen into electricity. Well, I'm joined now by Graham Cooley, CEO of ITM Power. Graham, hi, thanks for joining us. What role can green hydrogen play in the energy transition? The cost of green hydrogen is dominated by the cost of renewable power. Renewable power all over the world is coming down in price as the cost of natural gas and the volatility in the price of natural gas has gone up. So two things have happened with natural gas. One is the unpredictable nature of its price. And the other one is its absolute price having increased. And, and all over Europe now, uh, green hydrogen has parity uh, with um, industrial hydrogen made using natural gas. Russia is the world's largest exporter of ammonia, crucial for fertilizing crops, and that trade has been mostly blocked since the start of the conflict with Ukraine. The current shortage could hit food supplies worldwide, but this gas-hungry product could instead be made from hydrogen. We see ammonia producers not producing this year, which means that farmers are going to be planting in the planting season uh, without using ammonium nitrate because of the cost of ammonium nitrate. This is a very significant problem because not only does that, that mean we have an energy crisis, but we are now looking at a food crisis as well. So being able to supply green hydrogen to make renewable ammonia is a very important entry market as well. Hydrogen has been touted for a wide range of applications, including heating homes, that experts say are likely not practical. But it could be used in heavy goods vehicles that are too big to electrify. The best way of utilising hydrogen in transport is to use a heavy vehicle uh, that respects payload and also range and refuelling time. And what you need if you're going to produce a refueling station for uh, a transport application, is you need a vehicle that always comes back to the same places to refuel. Whether it's used in factories, buses or boats, a switch to hydrogen will require significant public investment. The EU wants to produce 10 million tonnes of green hydrogen by 2030, but has been hammering out the details of public financing for two years, while the US introduced tax credits for it in the recent Inflation Reduction Act. Now you get $3 a kilogram for producing hydrogen uh, uh, made using a, a renewable energy contract. So uh, this is a very tangible and simple subsidy for green hydrogen. Are you optimistic that we are where we need to be in terms of the rollout of green hydrogen? Is it happening quickly enough? So we have now wasted two years and we still don't have the tangible subsidies that are required to make the business models work. And so consequently, we are still waiting for the final investment decisions. So uh, first of all, uh, I am optimistic. But secondly, I'd say that uh, it's not happening fast enough right now. <laughs>